Hello, everyone. Let us know how the uh, the volume levels are and everything. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hello. Quick brown fox jumped over lazy dog. Lorem <laughs> ipsum dolors. <laughs> uh, how's everyone doing uh, in the in the chat? Good to see you guys have some questions already. Yeah. Nice to see you, Martin. Martin, Alex, the budget audio file. The budget audio file. Mark, Mark Trius, mm -hmm. Stark. What's up? Beef audio baby. Dances? If only I could have been a budget audio. <laughs> I'm a budget. I'm in my budget. <laughs> <laughs> this is fair enough. Um, no, I'm not. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. But yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. see. Uh, preview. Uh, yeah. So let us know how the, the audio is. Hey, Taryn, what's up? Brother Taryn. Um Hello. All righty. Well, so yeah, let's let's get going. We got we got Chrono and we got Tyler and myself. Um, Precog was not able to join us today because he had uh, class, but we'll make sure we get him in next time for all you fine IEM folks. Um, today, I guess we might as well start off with talking about some of the news that's happened around the headphone world this week. Um, I don't know where this is going. The, I don't want to go. The, the repainted. The re, repainted. The, uh, the big news is the HE5XX, which uh, is supposed to be the spiritual successor of the HE500, which is one of my favorite headphones of all time. Like of all time, like that is a headphone that I love and I, I yeah, I, I miss it. <laughs> um, and of course, the big drama surrounding this is that it, it like signs point to it being a painted Deva, wired Deva, but I, as Chrono correctly pointed out um yesterday you know just because it has the same driver specs and everything looks the same doesn't necessarily mean that it is the same and um and you brought up the great point about the 660s and the 58x and stuff like that and so there is a chance that this is not a wired deva at, or yeah black painted wired deva um, but the other thing I wanted to mention about this is that it's uh, from just speaking to you know, a number of people uh, like industry insiders and stuff like that on, on the subject, it, it's not incorrect to say that this is inspired by the HE500 because it is double sided and it does use a similar uh, structure there, a uh, similar magnet structure to actually the HE6. So, um, you know, it's not technically incorrect to say that it's, you know, it has a heritage of the HE500 in it. Um, it's just that for anybody who is wanting it to be an HE500 for technical performance, it's probably going to be a bit disappointed, like I am. <laughs> but again, we don't know that because what I'm wondering, and I'll, I'll let you guys uh, chime in on this as well. What I'm wondering is, does the dual entry make a difference for, um, you know, what the draw, what it's capable of doing? Because uh, even the wired Deva is still single entry. So that is still a difference. Um, I don't know. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys think about this about this release? Uh, I mean, it's a high five man in drop, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't this is the thing I haven't tried any of the other like the 4XX like I haven't tried the rest of the or the edition X, wait edition XX there's a yeah, bunch of the edition there. XX yeah uh, and then they had I think there was like a V2 of that and then there was and well first there was I think the 4XX. edition X and well yeah there's edition X and then edition X V2 and then I know they did one of those collaborations with drop for that egg-shaped hi-fi man thing. Um, but I don't remember exactly what that was called. Yeah, and then the 4XX, I believe, is a 400 I don't know. Yeah, and I've owned, I've owned two of the 4XXs, so. Wait, you? I, I like that one. That yeah, one they're was... good. I think as an entry-level planar, those are probably, yeah. honestly, those the are best entry-level planars. They're fairly inexpensive. Too. 150, like, I think. Yeah. One, I think they raised the price recently. Actually, but... one, one time I saw them as low as the 120, I see. 130, yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. crazy. For yeah. like a 400 i so like I always say, like if people getting into the audiophile world, I always say get the 400XXX or or the 400, the 4XX or the Sennheiser uh, 58X as as your comparable to decide if, which 
way you want to go, like, well, you can go have both. But, like, if you prefer that sound signature, like planar versus dynamic and, like, that kind of. What? What is going on on your TV behind you? <laughs> uh, Pac-Man. I think oh, Pac-Man's okay. jumping up now. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah my my uh, the NES Mini running demo mode, so it's running through all my. Oh, is that Super Mario? I think it yeah. is. It's, now it's uh, not still Pac-Man, but yeah. Really? See, oh, I, I thought it looked like the OG Mario menu. And then should be yeah it's a little still i'm looking at the youtube so it's delayed so i'm like <laughs> no that looks like it's <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah um yeah um someone says mad lust envy said that's the guy on head fire who said said the build was pretty good on the 5xx um you know that's the other thing with this um while it's a somewhat controversy if i had to choose between a deva and the 5xx i'd probably take the 5xx <laughs> because <laughs> i like the look the black yeah. look and i like the um i, I, I wasn't it looks a nice fan of the, yeah and i wasn't a huge fan of the deva headband and i prefer dual entry so mm-hmm. the question is can you use that little module that you can get with no, the deva to get the bluetooth <laughs> I, was with, I was joking with some friends about this that you could technically use two of, them. Use two of them <laughs> then have multiple different sources <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> so confused uh, right now yeah, but I mean the cup is the same, right? As the yeah. Davis, so you have the. It, it, it looks very nice. It's a really cool looking headphone with like I a agree. really exposed grill and yeah. you know, all black finish. And I do prefer the the old school high fi man headband actually. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I that's actually that. I agree. I agree. That was my biggest complaint with the Davis build is that it's an odd color and the headband wasn't that great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you it's know, it's definitely. I think it's definitely because of how similar the driver it looks. And you know all the whole the magnetic trace and the structure and all that looks pretty much the same well, as the Deva. And also the adhesive looks the same too. Oh yeah 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 yeah. And 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 of course uh, there's the measurements and the power readings and all that. Oh yeah. Uh, I think it's it's worth giving it the benefit of the doubt until I actually you know listen to mm-hmm. because yeah. always oh, earlier there was a thing of the 58x and the 660s. I mean the 58x measures almost exactly the same as the 660. Uh, and it has pretty much the same every every all the driver specs are you know, almost the same, but uh, they ended up sounding you know very different at least in performance. So yeah, uh, and you and you don't maybe we don't know we don't know how that how that uh, driver that they put together there will react to maybe exactly. a little better dual power, power and, and the yeah. dual-sided yeah. connectors. Mm-hmm. So and and like this is the thing for for me. I mean, they say even in the Deva, They've said that the Deva takes design inspiration from the Sasfara. Now, this is true because it does use asymmetrical magnet designs. So what I always wondered with the Deva was, was anything lost when with the effort to make it wireless with the blue mini module, which is right here? So, wait, I had it somewhere. Anyways, the, with the blue mini module, was there any performance that was like sacrificed to be able to get that? And when you're not having to do that, does is there potentially more or is there more potential there for that driver you know with the dual entry and that kind of stuff and then also what we don't know is the effects of pads of the pads if they did in fact change the pads right they would have had to done something different with the pads because they're a different color so that's that's mm-hmm. the other thing with that and yeah so that's why like i as much as like yeah okay maybe it looks like like the deva uh, i i also want to reserve judgment um, I think I was probably a little bit quick to jump on, you know, oh, wow, this, you know, <laughs> if it <laughs> if it looks like this, it probably is this, but I think everybody's who's saying, you know, we got to wait till we hear it is probably right, that it's not fair to pass judgment until we actually hear it. Um, okay, I'm moving on from that, unless you guys uh, <laughs> have any more yeah, thoughts. More questions in chat. Yeah, yeah. Good. the Marius Stark, uh, the Stelia versus VC for soundstage, uh, Chrono has both now as well, but I also have both, and the the VC is much uh, bigger sound. It's three D too, has a more of a bubble, and then uh, yeah, it's, it's I'd also say the VC presentation. Yeah, and I also think the VC, even though it has like the it's, no, it's supposed to be like a dark headphone or like a I don't even call it dark, like a warm headphone. It actually has a it's pretty bright actually uh, on the 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 treble side. Like it's actually a relatively bright headphone. Um, yeah, it, it actually has you know. I think if you if you consider Harman uh, treble to be you know the neutral mm-hmm. the treble, then it does it does come up to a similar level, mm-hmm. um, and it can definitely be a, a 
probably have enough of the trouble. It makes a good contrast though with yeah. you know the slightly warmer upper mids and stuff that I have. Yeah, but, sounds. Uh, I personally love it. It's my favorite headphone. But, but yeah. for the for the sound stage though, it, it's, it's <laughs> so much wider than yeah. the, uh, the sound than stage. The Stelia, it's just on another level. Stelia is like you're a head looking into a venue, and the VC is like more like you're there with it around you. Yeah, I think, <laughs> you're I think a head from, looking like a giant head, like a giant <laughs> head looking into it. Yeah. For, for relative comparisons, I'd say that the the, the Stelia is like a little bit more uh, closed in, a little more forward than something like a HD six XX. Mm-hmm. If you're familiar with that series, mm-hmm. whereas the VC is even wider than I, I, to me, it sounds even more open and wider than stuff like the DT nineteen ninety Pro. Mm-hmm. than the yep. lcd series headphones it's it's pretty legit in terms of sound stage yep honeymoon phase oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to be man. it's a good place well, to be I, look, I mean, I, look I'm, I'm i'm being serious i'm not lying <laughs> i'm teasing man i'm in this i love the thing too so i'm just here too. you've been in honeymoon for like a year and yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um so there was something else actually that was uh re- well I don't know if it's released, but people are talking about it. Um, there's the new Emotiva headphone. Oh, yeah. I got that correct. That. So I think Gutenberg did a thing on that. And I don't know anything about it, but um, mm-hmm. have you guys heard anything about this? I haven't. I, anybody I saw in the, the chat? At least anybody <laughs> in the chat, yeah. I'll be, I'll be right back one second. Oh, okay. Sorry. He's going to go get it. <laughs> He's like, I got one right here. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I haven't heard too much about it, but I don't know if anybody in the chat has. Well, um, uh, what I know is that they're really well known. Wait, did I get the name right? Is it Emotiva? Something like that. Um, but I know it's a company, uh, it's one of those companies that's really well known in the speaker world. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, uh, that is potentially interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's one of these things where it's like, we have to wait until, you know, we, we get it in hand, you know, or maybe somebody does measurements or, you know, we get a little bit more information about it because there's just not enough, uh, not enough yet. Um, and um, I'll wait for Krona to get back because there's there were other there were other let's say news tidbits, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to cover that yet. Um, I would say like the uh, um, yeah, there's been a couple of interesting things coming, like nothing crazy, nothing like super out there as far as news lately. But I mean, there's obviously the the HD 560s was a new thing that's where it's kind of already been played a little bit. That's but other than that, I'm trying to think. This has there been anything really exciting, really? Like for us, <laughs> or yeah, just in general, like just like in the headphone world. Like I mean, I'm trying to think. I know I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Nothing in particular. That's... No, like uh, the new campfire stuff. Oh uh, yeah, Vega the Dorado. That'd be exciting. Somewhat, well, I'm, I'm less. I'm less I, I wasn't a fan of either of them, but <laughs> yeah. uh, Dorado has me a little more interested because um, you know, like the, when they do these refreshes, they do retunes, you know, mm-hmm. and so if there's I mean, Terry mentioned that the Vega is not really that different. Uh, oh yeah, the Emotiva headphone. Emotiva headphone, yeah. Planar, yeah. Or, is it Planar? I don't know if it's Planar or, or Dynamic. I didn't. I, I I really just glanced and was like, oh, that's a that's a new thing. That's exciting because Emotiva is a company. The Maybe they throw a like, purple and it's an East stat. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> well, there are some exciting things happening as far as like you know headphone development that could potentially enter into the high end uh, a little bit as well like Moondrop's making an electrostat, an e-stat. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. I don't know if you guys saw the design for that. You know, like it it looks weird. (laughs) But um... I'm not even seeing the Emotiva headphone when I did a Google search for it. (laughs) It was was, uh, was Gutenberg. Yeah. Um... I can't, yeah, I'm going to use the key, key tappy taps, being lazy. Uh... Yeah, I'm not really. Uh, e- Emotiva Lounge. I'm not seeing. Oh, no, the it's, base it's set, the GR1. No. GR1. GR1 is what it's called. GR-1. Oh, here we go. I had to go yeah. to videos to see it. Yeah. Interesting. So this is this is one I, I do want to get my hands on because it's a big name. Like mm-hmm. the company is well known uh, for, for, you know, speaker design and stuff like that. Not that that's an indicator necessarily that it's going to be good, but you know it's, it's mm-hmm. something worth paying attention to i think um yeah for sure i uh what really i think there's other things like i think a lot of people are interested in like uh, i've been seeing in the different 
audio communities anyways, like interested in like a lot of these new, it seems like everyone's kind of searching for that perfect amp and and, and DAC lately is what I've been seeing a lot of, um, which is interesting. Uh, usually people go for headphones <laughs> first or whatever, but that seems to be a, a thing. I've been seeing a lot of news about the uh, Sparkos um, Aries. Not a lot of news, but like a lot of like random chit chat about right. that one, um, which is it. And then I've seen- Wait. Sparkos then, Aries, isn't there another company that makes one called Aries as well? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. like four different Aries amps. <laughs> and then, uh, what's the other one? Oh, Denif- Denifraps. 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 Is, wait, no, um, isn't the Denifraps the one that does Aries? Maybe. I think they do have an or They have something similar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Sparkos has an Aries. Okay. Yeah. There's Sparkos Aries, Aries amp. Know it's the one I know because uh, ZMF has the support. Yeah, see, I knew he was going to say because yeah. ZMF. Because uh, that's the one Zach, that Zach, Zach said that was his favorite song. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah it's his favorite song. Now, yeah. if you had a Denifrips Aries paired with a Sparkos Aries, would you just have the God tier setup? It's a whole lot of horn going on fighting. there. A lot of, a lot of angry. Uh... Somebody's internet. Oh, man. Somebody's voice changed. Oh, is it? Uh, is it? I don't know why. Some... Uh, it. Uh, uh. it. Uh, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Somebody just went like, because you know we are it would be off camera. We were having some uh, mic garbling yeah. issues. So. Oh wait, are we back? Is it mine? No, no, that's, uh, no like nothing, nothing went like bad, but then something sounded like you know I went like this, and I was like, oh, it's lag. Could just be the voices in your head. Um, <laughs> oh, the other news, uh, the is um, words. Sorry, I'm a little discombobulated. Uh, they were talking like I've been seeing a lot of uh, gear going up lately for sale used. Have you noticed this? Like, there's been a mm, no, big swing that. recently of like gear going up on like head and that kind of stuff. So it's People interesting. People need to stock up on toilet paper so they right. can get their toilet paper fund. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Winter's coming. <laughs> yeah, winter is coming. Uh, yeah, so I've been seeing that. That's what I've been because I've been seeing people posting constantly like, oh wow, all these people selling their stuff. Um, yeah. So I try um, to think nothing. Does Emotiva need 50 watts? <laughs> oh, I don't geez. think any headphone needs 50 watts. Yeah. Maybe there's one out there. It'd be crazy. It's kind of bananas. Yeah. Uh, is oh, there... it is a dynamic. Okay, thanks. Dynamic. Thanks. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a dynamic headphone, I guess. Um, any uh, any interest or any anyone heard the Quad Era 1? Uh, I haven't, but um, I'm not encouraged by what I've been reading about it. Yeah. Um, what would be a good deck upgrade over the MyTech Liberty deck? All the things. I'm teasing. Uh, I'm joking. That was. Don't, don't, I'm joking. Don't well, Tyler would probably say Hugo TT too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's five, five grand. Um, uh, I would say the Bifrost too. Honestly, shit, Bifrost two is probably one of the best because, uh, DACs you can get on the market right now. Because Liberty is a DAC amp combo, mm-hmm. right? If so you want a DAC the, amp combo, probably the RME ADI two, maybe. But it's just a different flavor it's of a different, different same. Yeah, know. You know, at that point, you're just talking different flavors, not necessarily better. Yeah. The the one thing with the Liberty is that it's way more analytic sounding than it's ESS. You know, right? it is ESS. Yeah, yeah. and I don't, I, I don't re, think re, it's re, re. Oh, as low. I know you don't like ESS stuff. <laughs> oh man, so sad about the AKM news. Oh, oh no, yeah, that's that. that there we go. That's what that I was thinking of. One. Thank you. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like racking my brain. I'm like, God, I just read something <laughs> last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Go yeah. ahead, Russell. You, you you posted it. It was that's. I was very sad when I saw that. Um, yeah. So for anyone unaware, um, AKM's factory had a fire, and the. I mean, allegedly it's or supposedly it's it's gonna mess up production for up to like a year even or maybe even more than a year yeah which means that many of these dax manufacturers are producing dax Mike. that use them yeah mics uh, and dax so like across the board yeah uh it, me- it means that you know they're gonna have to find other solutions and that means that we're not gonna see like right now there's probably still you know a lot of stuff that's in production because they probably still have them so you'll probably see stuff with the 4499 and stuff like that uh, you know mm-hmm. the d90 and stuff but eventually, that shortage is probably going to catch up, yeah. and they'll have to find other solutions. So that'll be interesting. Hopefully, they'll because start it was making. Like the, they said it was a year, right? A year. Yeah, year about a year. Disruption mm-hmm. in production of it. Yeah. It, it yeah. sounded like a lot of the based on the posts and reading through a little bit after you posted that, um, it sounded like there was going to be a lot of those guys already had like at least a year's supply of the chips already in place. 
to build. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So, so they hopefully they can <laughs> just just trickle it out a little bit yeah. slower. So you, <laughs> so you don't buy and demand is going to get yeah. crazy. DAX are going to go. Whew. Yeah. Well, AKM DAX. Um, yeah. And then see. they're going to cost right. more. Yeah. Okay. This which one... means which means they're going to sound better. <laughs> of course. <laughs> more money, more I better. <laughs> uh, I do have an answer for you, by the way, Vincent. Uh, on what would be a good upgrade from the Liberty. And it's a very expensive upgrade, but the Matrix X Saber Pro, <laughs> that is a fantastic deck. Literally uh, it's, the it's, upgrade. It's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's one of my favorite decks. Like, yes, okay, the chord stuff, I like it better, but that's like five grand. Like, yeah. I don't... <laughs> uh, wait, somebody, it must I be a this, crazy person. I think person. they asked this twice. <laughs> How nice is the soundstage depth the the reviewers talk about in the Aria? How does other headphones like the HD 100 does? Well, See, I, HD 100 compared to this? Chrono can answer that one, yeah. Um, see, it's 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 HD 100 wins. Wait, hold up, hold. Up. <laughs> yeah. Chrono has both, right? Or yeah, he just he, yeah, just did a yeah. What? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a comparison of the Aria and HD 100 is still in the making. I know I said it last weekend, but there were some camera issues uh, earlier in the week. So um, yeah, trying to get that sorted out. But a written review of that or written comparison should go up either today or tomorrow on the community forum. So if you want to check that out, but we can probably update the, the description of this video. Right, we'll link it. Yeah, we can link yeah, it there. Yeah. But um, so. One of the things that I mentioned was like the the HD hundred S, which I'm wearing right now, I think is a little more open and, and wide sounding. So if you're talking like in terms of distance of how how far close specific tracks will be, I think that this one does it. It will be able to create a better sense of, of space and distance and all that. But with the Aria, when you have several instruments recorded onto one track, what I what I noticed or heard, at least for me, what happened was that. Those were a little bit better spaced out. Like they had a little more uh, distance between them. Like the layers. Okay. Yeah, the layers, uh, even in like single track recordings. So like, say you have two instruments on, on one recorded through one microphone, they they tended to be feel a little bit better spaced out on the aria. Hmm. This so is very sharp separation on the aria for my. For that's just the planar thing as well. Like, yeah, yeah, it's 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 one it's just one of those planar qualities. Yeah. I love that quality. Broke the camera now. All right, all right. Stabby, hold stabby, up. stabby. <laughs> hold up. Let me, let me, let me say something because I was actually going to talk about this when we were talking about the five XX. This whole hi-fi man QC is horrible. I, you know, they've been really bad in the past. I know. I've I've read a lot about it, but recently I think they've really stepped up their quality. I think the only reason you'd break them is if you, you know, you try to. Because I was going to say, despite popular belief i'm actually pretty careful with my stuff the hc 100 for the record came broken from it, factory it, the, i just finished i just finished the, the job the yeah. reason it's funny to meme him is because he is so careful about his gear that's yeah. why it's funny to say that he breaks everything because he doesn't <laughs> to be yeah. clear I, I saw the photo <laughs> every time i think every time oh wait chrono every time i disconnect the cable on my hc 100 s i think of you yeah. <laughs> That's why I mentioned it in every review. I'm gonna mention it again in the comparisons. Those connectors. Yeah. They all even no, I, show. I, I hate the connectors too because the other the other side. They have of a it, magnetic you know, click too thing where it's wait, like it has oh, like. Do they? Know. Yeah. There's like oh, it feels like a magnet. I don't think it is, but it feels this, like it. Like outer thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like this ring here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't break it. Connected to the socket inside, and it came, It was already halfway out, and I didn't notice. And then when I pulled the cable, it just came pulled the entire thing. Yeah, because because the other thing that I noticed with them as well when I was evaluating actually both the HD 100s and the HD 20 was that it takes quite a bit of like gumption to pull out the connectors yeah. regardless. And yeah. they're not even locking. No, like, no. Well, they, 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 well, they have like a little notch that you can. Yeah, it has like a. Well, it shouldn't. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I hate those connectors. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, there was some. Oh yeah, on the high fi build quality thing. Um, actually, I, I have a video coming out soon. I was working. Oh yeah, Tyler Scott. He's now he's gonna break them. He's gonna pull out the connector. <laughs> Let's see if we'll, I can we'll get, get it to focus. We'll get a live on demonstration of the <laughs> of the focus. Don't 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 do it, man. Don't do it. Let's kind of wiggle it. it. And then oh god, right no. 
No, no, you're. Come on, focus. It's like it wants to oh, focus, oh. and then it does. Oh, stupid. Okay, but anyways. So, so yeah, that. <laughs> so, oh. the the thing is, you can't hear us. So let's just go like this. Yeah. Oh, no. Come on. Don't focus on my hand. Come on, camera. You can do this. We yeah, have faith in you. There it is. You can see the notch. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It came out. He, he broke it. Lived. He broke his yeah. So it has a little like notch it, that it kind of sockets in. That's what I've found. Um, I just yeah. So uh, on that on the subject of of breaking things, um, I have a video coming out soon about the Focal Alex, which is behind me, and or back there somewhere. It already yeah. broke. Um, well, okay, here's the thing, like, you know how there's, like, videos about, you know, the build quality, like, the driver dies or something like that, or... Oh, the know, clipping or whatever. Posts about clipping and stuff like that. Uh, like, I have been trying to make it clip, and I can't. Yeah. Like, I, 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 when I had mine, I could never get it to clip. Because you only listen to jazz. You gotta throw on some squirrels. No, no, I, I threw on... I you threw put on, on that dubstep aggressive and boost the, the, the sub bass by 12. I stuff that I would never <laughs> normally listen to. And I even I even tried to like you know get it to clip by like boosting the bass mm -hmm. as well, and then just playing like sine waves and stuff, and I, like below 100 hertz, and I, I couldn't get it to. to well, I'll, I'll say from my experience, I heard it on the Elegia, I heard it on the Clear, both at ridiculous levels that I would never listen to, and so, and bass boost on the Clear, but I didn't hear it on the Celia at all. Ever. Yeah, yeah. No. So that's that. I, I, it makes me feel like. So well, two things with that. The the first is that there's there's probably like a variable level for where that happens depending on s certain conditions, like certain things. Because like even on this one, like over ninety dB, like pushing the like pain inducing, I couldn't get it yeah. to to clip. And then I'm like, I just th th this experiment needs to stop because I'm going to damage my hearing. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> do you think it would have to do? It could be affected by the power output of the amplifier. Um. Okay. Uh, so the only thing that could potentially influence this is if you had a really high output impedance source, mm. um, because all those focals, not all of them, but I, but they all, almost all, all of them. All of them are like know, 100. They're easy, like 80 to like 30 something, right? No, 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 no. no I was saying there's an impedance um, bump there in the bass. Oh. Mm, I think around it. 50 hertz, where if you use a high output uh, uh, impedance source, like really high output impedance source, you'll boost the bass like crazy. So maybe there's a condition where somebody is using this uh, on a really high output impedance source, and it's it's actually having a very substantial effect on the bass. I actually did some measurements as well with it on the tube amp, and the tube amp because it's you have variable output impedance selectors there. Um, you can like basically you just turn it to a different output impedance, and then it boosts the bass like crazy. So <clears throat> so that's one that's one potential answer for it. But I think like. The other thing I was going to mention is that, you know, there's probably some QC issues there, probably, but every manufacturer has, yeah. you know, yeah. failure rates and you're Deviation, never going to hear, stuff, yeah. yeah, every, everybody's going to have that. And, you know, you're, you know, if you, you're six months down the road or a year down, down the road, like you're not going to get the people passionately telling you that your, their headphones are working great. Like that you're only going to get the people who are saying, oh, my bro. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> so it's it's, I, those, it, well, it's always that case of like, those yeah, kind of minority. It's the vocal minority that tends tends to be very yeah. loud, and and then it kind puts everyone in, in in a panic. You know, yeah, so. and maybe it's it's like bad because like you keep seeing it, right? You keep seeing, oh, this is the clipping issue, or this is a. I, I saw on Olive's gadgets video where the right he said the right side driver failed, and they took it apart. And then try to put it back together again, and it did, he couldn't get it to work. And then they sent him another one, and the right side driver was also, or something weird was also going on, or channel imbalance or something. And, and I saw that, and I thought, okay, you know, that's bad, but maybe he's just unlucky because <laughs> I've never had any issues. So, uh, uh, real quick, there's a couple hey questions. Uh, sorry, you can jump on some too, Chrono. Oh, yeah, I was gonna answer the question: the is the six x x a good buy? For my first headphone, fantastic yeah. buy. Yeah, great. I I, under five hundred dollars, I don't think it could do much better, really. Uh, uh, the OG Sashi six hundred versus five sixties. I would say keep the OG six hundreds, and without hearing the five sixties. But also, as for amp DAC pairings, uh, JDS Labs Adam DAC and amp. Those I are, agree. I think, each each one of those are a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're you're gonna have a but you could set up total and or you can do the the shit stack. The same say, same how shit stack. The, shit stack. How as much well. is the Modi like the Modi same. Also 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, yeah. Yeah. 
I think it's, you have to pay like taxes and shipping with shit, but like it's it, okay. so it jumps yeah. both of them actually. So you end up paying probably closer to like two fifty to that range. See, and here's the thing: the L thirty, from what mm-hmm. I've found, has more power than the Magni Heresy. Probably. Or you can you got more room there, and you get three different power selectors. It's a bit more expensive, mm-hmm. but I think I would probably take a the the shit DAC shit audio DAC, <laughs> uh, the Modi. Uh, yeah. thing yeah yeah <laughs> I'm with uh, the, we're tracking the, we're tracking <laughs> over the e30 um this yeah. goes back to the whole ess versus akm kind mm-hmm. of thing right like because the e30 as far as i know correct me if i'm wrong but that's that's an ess based one isn't it i think it's that or it's yeah it is ess i think i'm pretty sure so i would i would whichever whichever one of those i would probably want to go with the akm one because for less especially for like the more entry-level stuff the, i find that the the implementation of ESS stuff just generally isn't as good, but that's been my, like, I don't have like concrete evidence for like everything. It's just like what I've observed Ooh. so far. <clears throat> um, the other one is interesting. I saw, and it's actually, it's been something recently I've been seeing in the forums as well is someone was asking about getting, um, uh, using speaker amps to power their headphones. And I believe amps and sound does a converter box. I'm not sure how expensive oh, yeah. it is. And so, and there was a guy recently in our forum that, that just put, got, that he just got it and so he's getting it in so he's he's pretty stoked about that so there is options for that and it does work it's uh, i think it's a balanced i think you can pick but i don't, I don't know but anyways the amps and sound does does those and i'm sure other people do too but that's just more recently literally i think it was yesterday he posted about it yeah. so um, um i see here um diana v2 versus Imperian. diana probably but diana's uncomfortable <laughs> I, have you heard comfort or like Wait, have you heard the V2? I've heard it real briefly. Or no, I've just heard the Fi. I just the Phi. And then okay. but I just know it's the same more or less comfort levels. So yes and no, because <laughs> the previous ones were like the most uncomfortable thing I've ever yeah. put on my head. Then they updated the pads, which were better. But it's still better. the same. It's like... still the same design. Um the the pad difference does help like a mm-hmm. lot. But it, it was still not as comfortable as when I used I mean, the EMS mod, right? And so the EMS mod really made it comfortable because uh, he takes the pad, the material out of the top of the pad. Yeah, yeah. And then I think you can get the little, I've seen people put the little uh, Dakoni nuggets. I oh, think, yeah. And put them like right where, because I guess there's a hot spot like right here well, on the, the things. And DMS, well, DM, yeah, but that also depends because I, yeah, I'm not sure. I think that's different on the V2 as well. I mm-hmm. think there's actually, a, it's a bit longer. DMS can correct us if we're wrong about yeah. that. But, um, I saw like when we were at when we tried out his headphone at Can Jam, mm-hmm. he actually had like the top part was also um, they had not the, extra uh, pads or whatever. He had that weird leather, pad, thing. but it was like a yeah. yeah, there was a thing around it. I like, remember so, seeing that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but honestly, I, I the Imperian is super comfortable though. I did get to hear the Diana V2 against the like Diana Phi non modded. I got to hear them both side by side. And it was night and day between, like, I was like, the Diana Phi is just so much better for technical performance. Like, it was like, wow. Like, it, to me, it was like, the, the Diana V2 was maybe, yeah, like, I, I mean, it was fine. Like, there was nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Um, the tuning was a bit maybe odd, but but it just did not sound as detailed um, as, the, as the Phi. So I can see I can see why they wanted to go with the different price tiers there. Because it just was not on the same level, um, but so between the two, <laughs> yeah. The V2 and the Imperian. If comfort's important to you, probably be Imperian. If yeah. you like bass, Imperian. Uh, if you like everything else, go with Phi. I would almost, <laughs> I would almost say Diana V2, <laughs> yeah. but it's like it's like because it, with the Diana V2, you can at least uh, swap out the pads for like the DMS mod, mm-hmm. right? And then I do think that Dana V2 is probably going to be technically more capable than the Imperium. Are, are they comparably priced too? Yeah, they are. That's yeah. why it's. Well, I think I think it, it depends on what you're looking for. Right? Yeah, if you're going for Diana like a... has a reputation for being like this really high performance resolution thing, whereas the uh, Imperium seems to be relaxed, I mean, warm that's, base. That's coming soon, though. Uh, a more warm, more lush. Sort of relaxed experience. It's, it's a weird experience, man. Like they yeah. also, it, it is weird. The treble but, gets beamed into your ears. <laughs> but I will say, I do think that the, that the Empyrean doesn't need EQ. No. Whereas the Diana Phi, at least, um, it really did. It it 
this was a 10k resonance that that was pretty rough on it yeah um but when i did eq it, it sounded fantastic so <laughs> it sounded way better than the imperial ever could so uh, well, what, do you, what do you guys uh, somebody's asking what do you guys uh, like the whole discussion about clean versus warmer sources like is there is like is clean sound not enjoyable well, mm. was clean. I mean, def- I mean, there's. I, it depends on your so definition of what clean. <laughs> <laughs> I wash the crap like, out of my tubes. It's amazing. Analytical <laughs> clean. I think is what they're talking about here. Yeah. yeah. So, because I, I, to me that's different. I think neutral and clean are different things as well, yeah. right? Like to me, clean means it's like it's it has a really dark background. There's no like it's just Black good separation. That's but, a wonderful let's call it. Part. Let's call it like. Yeah. A, <laughs> A more true to source feeling sort of yeah clean and like I would say clean and and smooth is like my preferred I, signature. Uh, SPL Fonitor X versus the Cayenne HA One Mark II tube amp. Fonitor would the be Fonitor clean. Is the clean one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, that's yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and even compared to the IHA Six, the Fonitor is the the Fonitor is like more I don't know yeah clean. While I do think that. The transparency is built on the same level. Yeah. Um, the one thing I want to mention, like I, we've said this before, I think, but where you know people talk about sources being warm and bright and on and that kind of stuff, and like ideally they don't change the frequency response unless you're messing with output impedance or using tube amps, like tubes of some kind, because tubes will make things warm. But for solid mm-hmm. state amplifiers, like some, there are, some are there warm. are some that that can actually change the frequency response with you know certain transformer couple designs and stuff like that and i've seen like like so for example the rupert neve stuff does it's actually, warmer it is it does on certain outputs it does warm up the it does boost the bass a little bit and um they're using i want to say the bioelectric the the Violetrics yeah, well, I, and the Violetrics, the other one yeah uh, well no that's not the Violetrics line it's it's lake people but lake it's people. the same company mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. um and for their Nimbus stuff, they're trying to do this as well. So there are certain transformer couple designs that aren't meant to be perfectly transparent, but they're su- but that's specifically because they're developing a transformer to have a certain kind of sound. So they probably wouldn't measure well, like on an you know if people are doing ASR kind of stuff, and they're they're going to see some deviation there. But that's intentional. So mm-hmm. I yeah, yeah I mean it can still be a great sounding amplifier, um, but I really, I really think like for for like most of the stuff that like is under like yeah a thousand dollars like the more like let's say objectively excellent stuff that's not going to really change the frequency response um, I don't think at all. So for me, higher. it's kind of like the the headphone thing, right? Like the headphone uh, and a neutral. Uh, okay, hold up. A regular neutral headphone versus you know something like this, right? Where to? <laughs> <laughs> I look, okay so like, if, if i can oh, stop up, it hold up. <laughs> if if i consider this to be like I, I i mentioned this in the live stream that i consider you know the, the sennheiser sort of hc 800 hc 600 style of tuning to be neutral right but then there's a tuning like this which is you know has its own sort of mild coloration that is lovely and fun and I think it's Lovely. different flavors and uh, which, oh, okay, so there, but there's also, then there's also the thing, which one do I think is more accurate to what I think an instrument would sound like in real life as a musician? Well, that's also your experience. Yeah. As, as a musician. Yeah. Also, so also for that me, factor. when I think like, oh, which, which one do I think is, is the more accurate one? I would say this one, which one do I enjoy more? I think is a little more fun. Probably this one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but, uh, it's almost as if preference matters. That's yeah. It's almost as if preference matters. Stop it. Uh, I, I see here. Um, there's a lot of good questions. Actually, yeah, there's a lot of really good questions, guys. So we, we, yeah, we, there's there's <laughs> actually been a, 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 people keep asking Stelia versus uh, BC Detail. Uh, it's tough, but I would. Email. That's a really close one. <laughs> yeah, it's really close. I would. Actually... I want to. I want to say that I think the Stelia is marginally. Yeah. Better, but potentially. Like, only very slightly. They're yeah. very, they're very. I mean, all these headphones, HCA twenty, HC hundred, BC Stelia. I think they're all in the, the same sort of the, the pretty, ballpark, pretty just flavors, yeah, pretty close ballpark for, for resolution. Um, we'll get we'll get you a close back E stat. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one. I don't think I don't think it's. I, don't, I think there's some. All your hairs in your ears will get pulled out. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, maybe, maybe like electrets. I think you can do. There have been some clothes back electrets, um, like a long time ago. Um, I see. I, I had like a whole bunch of stuff, like topics to talk about, but we can They're just all the window, window. But there's so many, there's so many good questions. Yeah. Um, I see here the, the THD for the Empyrean is really high compared to even classic Odyssey. Is THD a bad metric? Yes, because it means, well, if you see THD published, if THD being published on a headphone spec chart is meaningless, um, unless we're t unless it's like 50% or like something ridiculous, um, because it doesn't tell you where the THD is low or high. And it also doesn't tell you which, so it doesn't tell you if it's fundamental, if it's um, uh, second or third harmonic. Uh, or fourth or whatever as not tell you it doesn't give you that information and then also it's just aggregating it to a number to an arbitrary number that has no bearing on actual technical like capability what it might have some uh impact on is eq ability maybe but even then you don't know just by looking at the spec sheet because you don't know where that that's going to show up um and there was there was a recent thing that was done um, to indicate that, or to show that THD is actually a really com a completely useless uh, metric. Because of how far, we don't... Because you'll never be able to hear put it. put into perspective how far down these headphones 0. Really 0. are. 0.1% THD, THD is completely inaudible. Mm -hmm. And 0.2% is completely inaudible. So, <laughs> like, and you have headphones that cost, like, $300 that have published lower THD yeah. than headphones that are way more technically capable that are, you know, high end stuff. And it's mm -hmm. just because THD is, it's like when you see a, you know, the, the frequency response that gets published in the spec sheet usually says 10 to like 40 K that is completely meaningless. <laughs> well, like you can also, then you can also talk about twos. Like there's certain distortions that end up second and third harmonic distortion. Yeah, if you look at are actually being pleasing and enjoyable to listen to. Yeah, well, actually, uh, right now, so uh, I just did the Alex thing comparison or whatever impression, and straight off the the TT two, it had a its own unique signature, what have you, and it was enjoyable. But I've been really listening all night with my radiance, radiance, yeah, uh, with the T with the T four, the ECP T mm four, -hmm. and man, it just it really it kind of came into its own. Um, it really has it really pushed up more against like what the Stelia was doing, if that makes sense. It didn't become as it's, it was, I don't know, just became a little more pleasant. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Uh, oh, he says even in a THD graph. Um, so this is the other thing about, if you look at uh, THD, like the, the, the actual plot for balanced armature driver IEMs, um, all, in all cases, third harmonic distortion is significantly higher than everything else. Um, and I have a suspicion that this is where BA, the quote unquote BA timbre comes from because I think it's also it's bordering on the audible threshold for, for balanced armature driver IEMs. Um, so it probably does matter to a certain extent in the in those graphs, but there's the problem with that is that you have to know that it's at an audible threshold for starters, which it isn't always, and potentially not even the case in BAs. That's just my suspicion. Um, the other is um, you have to know that the measurement was taken in an environment where that THD plot is actually readable, right? Because if you have it, this is one of the reasons why I think Crin doesn't post THD, but also like if you have it in a, in an environment that's kind of noisy, that stuff can show up there as well. So you're not going to get the best indicator of THD. Um, uh, real quick, someone asked, uh, does Stelia sound good with the uh, two amp? Depends on the two amp. Uh, the ECPT4 has a low gain, and it's it works fantastic with that. Uh, I think the tuba I have that on loan right now. The uh, Hagerman what's, sorry, what's tuba. The, what's the impedance of the of the Stelia? I, Ooh, I don't. I can't remember either. It's it's, it's pretty 30, low. It's like thirty. It's pretty low. Yeah. Or 30. Yeah. Um, there, as far as I know, and this was when when we were talking with Focal, they said that they 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 were using a fully copper voice coil for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and but yeah. So I mean, I have a bunch here. As long as they have a low a low gain mode on the tubes, um, uh, it's they. I find them per perfectly fine with the, a lot yeah. of the hybrids, or uh, especially, um, they sound they sound great. Actually, most of my listening is off of a, a tube hybrid or a or a tube of some sort generally. So, and I have the Stelios listen all the time. So yeah. Um, shit amps are warm in comparison to JDS Labs Element Two HD five sixty S. Which are clean, transparent, and dark. I can what? say that. Yes. 
Wait, yeah, wait, so, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 so wait. 560 that, that, was a, that was a run-on sentence. Yeah. Can you please so, break it down for me? So, it was written as a run-on sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so, understand. I, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm going to have to look for that. So the, the, the JDS, I think he's saying dark in the sense of background. It's, oh, the, oh, the amp is dark. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. The, Okay, not because the, the 560S is not dark. <laughs> no, uh, the amps, yeah. It's probably about the comparing, comparison. So I would say, yes, the JDS stuff is more on the neutral dark dark in the sense of dark dark background side and then the shit stuff is more on the warm or uh enjoyable i, I think it depends on the element because the original element i can't remember what deck it was using but it was it was it's an akm bit. uh but it sounded it didn't it sounded a lot more neutral or clean to yeah. me than, than the, the the element two which is using a 4493 i believe mm -hmm. that which to me had a slightly warmer low end actually mm -hmm. on the element two so um, um, I would say that's a smoother sort of yeah. combo. So but I'd say the uh, Jotunheim is definitely more warm sounding. D Divine Current says I don't hear much, if any, difference between DACs. Is on the same subject. Uh, the only time I heard a large difference is when I plugged in my HD six hundreds to an old DAT tape player from the nineties. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is the thing. Like once you have a standalone DAC, the difference is among them is it's very minimal um like when you go from one like an akm to a burr brown to an ess even well that may have more difference but even then it's already not that much of a difference so yeah i i and the thing with that too i mean this is something that ian has said like a long time ago yeah um once you actually do start picking up on the DAC, once heard can't be unheard <laughs> it, it, suddenly it matters like yeah. suddenly uh, especially if you've already settled on headphones that you know are like your you know your jam jam yeah then then that does start to make a difference mm -hmm. um and the big thing that i've been that i've realized recently is that ESS based decks aren't actually that bad. <laughs> no, they're not. It's, about it's, all, it's, about it's all about the implementation. It's all about the implementation because, um, because for a lot of the lower end stuff, at least it used to be the case that they had some pretty bad intermodulation distortion issues, which was what caused that glare issue. So, as far as I know, at least, then maybe there's another reason for the the let's let's say quote unquote saber glare or cheese grater kind of sound. <laughs> <laughs> but these days it's not it's not like that anymore at yeah. least from the stuff that i've been listening to like that su9 behind me oh wait it's there the su9 is doesn't really have that issue so yeah um yeah. uh that makes my choice of the vc and Celia even harder well since they both play nice with two bands perhaps it comes down to <clears throat> details and sound stage I would Detail, say I think it's marginal, so it's it's almost. I would say that between those two, you're getting, you know, really good performance. I, I would consider it a non-factor. Mm -hmm. I just go by two. preference at that point. Yeah. If if yeah. it's me, I would get the VC. That's just. Yeah, but I mean, me too. Just, but yeah. The sound stage is just way superior. Yeah. Well, VC. that's the other thing too is the VC is a 300 ohm headphone, mm -hmm. so so tubes would be way better with it. <laughs> well, that's the thing is like what you're potentially pairing this with, like for the audiophile who's like getting into that kind of stuff. That would be more fun, I think, because like the differences would be mm -hmm. more significant. Well, I have to say it sounds fantastic. Both, off, I've only tried the the, the ZDT Junior for tubes, but it sounds great off his solid state as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm biased towards higher impedance headphones. I like, I like when I can use them off of an amplifier and get some kind of scaling. And there's a difference between one amplifier and another one, or you know, you you really get the benefits of you know various different sources whereas i find with stuff like the focal clear unless you're using high open impedance sources there's not that huge of a difference for scaling and stuff like that um let's see oh so i had there was a great question here uh but i, I lost it again yeah there's been a bunch man. people have been really <laughs> going good with the questions uh, um someone asked how they can be friends with us uh, <laughs> hi friend like, how, how would someone how would someone become best friends with all three of you? Asking for myself. Well, it's good you're not asking for a friend. <laughs> um, uh, interaction, hang man. Just, interaction. Hang out with hang out in the uh, headphone community forum. I yeah, guess. come hang out on the stream. The stream yeah. forum. Friends, yeah. You can go visit Tyler. He's uh, you know he lives in. Yeah, I'm in the the Seattle area. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a big community out there for yeah. this kind of stuff. You can't you can't visit me because I live in an igloo in the North Pole. So, 
surrounded by ice. Um, <laughs> two bamps got relatively more second order distortion, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but not always. It's not always noticeable. Like second or third harmonic, yeah. But like, what does that even mean as far like there? I can't remember. There was a test somewhere where like it, like increased the amount of distortion, and like it was it was shocking how high it got before you'd actually hear it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, two amps. This is the other thing. Is like okay, regardless of where this comes from. Tube amps do have an impact. So the question always comes up, like, can you just EQ something to make it sound like a tube amp? And the answer is you can EQ something to give it a similar kind of FR, a similar yeah. kind of like warmth that you might get from a tube amp. But there are other things that happen with a tube amp that you can't do from just EQ. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, to me, at least in my experience, it's not, it's not the same. Yeah, not the, I, I agree. Not the same. To be our friends, somebody said, ask us what our dream headphones are, and then just buy us for buy them. Yeah, I, yeah. My I love the Sasvara. If you want to be my friend, uh, you can. I'm set, mate. <laughs> I'm set. I'm already good. So don't. Yeah, I'm not, I, I know. I know. I'm pretty early into the the whole audio thing, but uh, I'm pretty much set too. If I'm being honest. So you you see that? No, no. I I I. This, just wait, just wait until you hear some of the, some of the, like, wait until you hear an SR007 Mark II, 0.9. No, having, having the, the electrostat thing is just too inconvenient. See, no, it really is. It, it, like, if I think, if I, if I go back to, to forgetting reviews and everything, mm -hmm. what's most important for me is I want the best sound out of the most convenient thing I can use. So, you know, least desk space, most comfortable, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I would. I, I, it, you have to take care of them and stuff too, with bags and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that's that's yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm on a big. Be like, you guys hate e stats. You guys are biased against. Yeah, that's what somebody just complained. I think it was in the comments. Some, yeah, I've seen a couple uh, times. Think, Why don't you guys review e stats? <laughs> was it the Aria video? Was it the H hundred video? I can't I remember. remember. Somebody was like, "What's what do you guys against e stats? We need it's more." There's nothing e against it. It's just. I, I should actually have one coming out soon. Uh, on an e-stat there's the um yeah i won't i won't spoil it but there's one yeah. that it used to be on tiles wall of fame oh lads i have two minutes i really apologize okay so, oh uh, yeah any <laughs> questions for me i'm really Quick questions for chrono to class. <laughs> i like how you called us lads that made me feel like you know i'm an old-timey british movie lads <laughs> um let's see you, you guys you guys um... are cool that's nice to hear Oh, thank you. You're a friend now. <laughs> you're you're not out there mis here misleading people into lesser products. Well, undo hype like video adder. <laughs> <laughs> Money machine go bruz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, audio quest night owl slash hawk bass mids equivalent to ZMF in ZMF world. What, uh, 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 oh, uh, they don't make it anymore. But they're a little. They're. Uh... The mod, the T fifty R R mod, whatever. That the the, the Ori. Ori, yeah. Was that actually like that? It was pretty I, bassy, as I recall. I mean, I only listened to it very short. I never, I never owned it. I've been wanting. I've been searching for one of the purple uh, burst ones, but. Do I yeah. listen to electronic music? Only Astronomia. You know that song from the from the Coffin Dance video. That's mm -hmm. that's my extent of that. Yes, he listens music. to electronic music. It's an electrical signal that goes to his DAC that goes out and it plays <laughs> okay, with the Beatles. Okay. <laughs> 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 All music is electronic music, unless you're using a, a, a record. Sorry, God, I, had to, I, had I only to do listen it. to digital media, and I use tons of EQ, and everything's filtered through a robot. So no, yeah, everything's electronic music. Everything's filtered through a robot. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't come up with anything to say, and I'm not a really funny guy. So there you go. Yeah, I think you're a funny guy. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, uh, Corto L. Um, anything from Felix in the under the two thousand range? They they make really good stuff from the Echo to the what's Elise. This? Elise. Thank you. And then the Euphoria is I think above two thousand though. But the Elise is really good. I gotta, if anybody I hear... knows those guys, get them to email me back. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want. I'm, I want I'm really sorry, but uh, oh, yeah, you got most of part. So thank okay. you everyone. I hope you have a nice weekend. And all right, uh, young lad. Peace. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right, lads. Goodbye. Uh, uh, it's gonna, yeah, there we it's go. Gonna, now we got, hopefully, there we go. let me let me make sure that the it's okay. 
It's it okay. looks okay. Yeah, it looks yeah. okay. Okay. What uh, is it good east at outside of stacks right now? Um, oh, there's that the guy that makes the he does this DIY one. Uh, that's supposed to be pretty good. Um, wait, what? The DIY honey, east at? Yeah, it's the honey. Um, You're talking Sonoma? No, it's the the guy. He's out of the east coast. He does the the honey. It's called honey, like honeycomb. It's like a honeycomb thing. I'm, I'm, it's on, it's on the forum it's on the forum it's <laughs> okay. one of the yeah he's uh so he does one and he those, those are pretty good um they have like a cool honeycomb grid with like the orange thing and uh, those are supposed to be pretty decent uh, tyler's gonna hate this but i'm gonna say the the best e-stats are at least the ones that i've heard are stacks sr007 2.9 and mm-hmm. Uh, the hi-fi man Shangri-La stuff. <laughs> Shangri-La, yeah. Not the Jade. <laughs> Not the like Jade. The, the Jade is the, pretty notorious. The Shangri-La. So the Shangri-La senior was ridiculous, mm-hmm. but that's like fifty grand. And yeah. I, and like I've said this before, but like I only, I only listen to the junior for like a, a minute, because <laughs> if you're in you're in the room there with Dr. <laughs> Frank Bian, and he's got his like huge fifty thousand dollar headphone set up there. And you have a choice between the fifty thousand dollar one or the four or three four thousand dollar one. Well, yeah, I'm gonna F- go with fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, fifty thousand. So I listened to the senior for a lot longer than the junior, but I, yeah, I think the junior and like realistically, the junior and the uh, SR 7 mark or two point nine are kind of the those are like the e stats to beat. And if I were to buy an e stat, it would be one of those two. Yeah, I, see, I, I just, I mean, I think that the e stats. I just, I'm just not. For whatever reason, it's just not one of my. Sorry, it's getting the sun actually started coming out. Uh, the the um, I'm just not really a big fan of Eastat sound. I guess it's not that I don't dislike it. It just what I wonder is like, do you do those? Because like I kind of got this feeling when I was listening to those. Maybe it was just those ones, but mm-hmm. I kind of got the feeling that the dynamics just weren't there the way that yeah. they are on like, you know. Like the, the the punch and the slam mm-hmm. and the excursion just and it, was not the same as a dynamic driver head. Yeah, I think that's probably what it is. I just have a preference for dynamic. I just that sounds natural or right to me, not natural, but right to me, I guess. So that, that's more like that's how you know like my preference. Well, m- majority of the time but will be towards the dynamic. This side. is an interesting. Is this precog free? No, he's just he. Yeah, he had school. school. <laughs> um, the it, young lads are in school. <laughs> I was I was actually joking with some friends of mine about this. Uh, but the I think there's a really good argument that you know even though like when certain headphones have really good dynamics that's a fun engaging quality the trade-off is probably also that the detail isn't as good because you're because you're you're not getting the detail the same way you're getting Mm -hmm. more instead of detail you're getting the punch yeah and I and like personally I, I I can see the argument for either one of them but I really like that punch and slam quality. Yeah, it's tough to it's tough to give up. Yeah, once you have it, and once you've had it for a while, like it is it, that it, it engagement factor, right? Like the of the punch and slam, it's a different type of engagement. You have the 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 like the e stat has that in your the presentation engagement, right? Where it's like the details and everything, kind of like an yeah. Aria or the Ananda kind well, of the, thing. The, the, I mean, if you think about it, right? The mm-hmm. an E-stat and a planar are similar in terms of their pistonic mm-hmm. uh, motion, whereas like dynamic driver, like a Focal, you kind of kind of more of a so, corrugated design. Well, it's a hybrid yeah. design, but it's corrugated mm-hmm. with um, yeah, the M-shaped dome and stuff like that, right? Whereas with the planars and the E-stats, it's like a more of a flat <laughs> yeah it's not a kind of thing so which makes a certain amount of sense because uh, you know you, you you're not getting that much difference depending on where like whether it's bass or treble right as far as like the way that that sound is being produced yeah um, so, sorry someone asked can we have a discussion about closed back wireless headphones uh they're wireless they're closed back like what uh <laughs> Uh, I, I have one. <laughs> uh, I I think they're fantastic for out on the out and on the go. No, this that is type not of working stuff. all that great. <laughs> You're gonna pull up the Odyssey uh, Mobius and the Odyssey oh, LCD too. Yeah, I have the Mobius. Where's Sankar? Sankar's in the chat. Yeah, he's gonna Say be. <laughs> I'm I'm rocking all Odyssey today with that. <laughs> LCD XC back here. You know, it's, it's an Odyssey day today. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but like the way that the line is for our switch, it almost looks like we're in the same room. Yeah, I know. If, I you, if you did it, if I did, if I didn't do that, like it would be. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, 
uh, to me, I think closed back wireless headphones or have a very specific use case. And for that, I would honestly, I don't know, you've had, you've heard more of the wireless side, but I think my favorite so far has been the Sony, I think. The that, XM4? Yeah. Uh, yeah, what I liked about the XM4 is that you could, so it had a good soundstage for starters, mm-hmm. but it also, you could um, EQ and yeah. change the, and because like, the default tuning on that was pretty bad, like it was, uh, yeah, <sighs> nah, yeah. Once, once you that's <laughs> and that's the problem, I think, with it is like once you hear stuff like, like, my man, once you hear, eh, once you hear stuff like, like these or the Stelias or like even the Elysia, like it's really hard to go wireless with those because there's so yeah. many, um, but if if they can figure it out, man, like, if, oh, it'd if, be fantastic, yeah, right? Like, I mean, the Panda was the first, like, let's say audiophile headphone that mm-hmm. was like wireless and closed um the mobius is is okay so the mobius is probably better than the panda yeah the, the mobius um, is actually pretty great mobius is the one that i i think like if i were to buy a closed back wireless headphone today yeah mobius is definitely <laughs> mobius is probably the one well, maybe the pin there's no the pin rose isn't wireless though right it is it, it is. And it is low latency wireless oh, that's right so mm. technically, I mean, I was, I was talking to Sankar about this, and like the Mobius is technically a wired headphone yeah. with USB. That's the that's the, and that's how I always used it. Yeah, because so. you're because otherwise you're going to get the delay and stuff mm. like that. But you know, for music, uh, I think the Mobius is fantastic yeah. for that. But for I, gaming, no, I would I would the Penrose is the way to go for gaming. So fun fact with the Mobius is I actually loved listening to it. Um, and having it in the 3D headspace where your head moves and all that stuff, because it reminded me of <laughs> well, because I because I used to have my monitors system, uh, desktop monitor system set up, and uh, it would it it would remind me of that. Like I could, it, it gave me that same sensation of listening to like a near field monitors without yeah. having to have near field monitors. No, I, I I get that. I mean, it's it definitely it's it's a unique thing that mm-hmm. it's cool that they added it as an option. But yeah, you don't have to use it at all. Yeah. See, what I would love, and I think this is what everybody in like our community wants. It's like wireless, closed back, ANC, LCD one. Uh, that yeah. would that would win headphones. Yeah, that would be, win. you know. And I know they were oh. doing, they were working on that that LCD one closed back, but that oh. never turned into uh, anything, at least not yet. Um, it's not wireless, but the I listened to Ant Droids, um, I signs. The LCD eye sign. It's the yes. little on ear, but then he got. Oh, that's the, the sign. That's the, the sign. sign. Sorry, sign. Yeah. The sign, and uh, he put um, what pad? he put some off aftermarket pads on. I think like they're like pilot pads for like uh, skull candy, <laughs> of all things. Okay. And and they're not Bluetooth, but those things, holy smokes, they were super comfortable. And they act with the skull candy pads that he had on them. It they actually went so over here. Were they, were they like they, ear pads or like a headband pad? No, just ear ear pads. Ear pads. So okay. you, you swap yeah. the pads, and they did the. It was it sounded really good for like straight off his iPhone or off my iPhone. Cause, sorry, because those ones are arguably the best tuned <laughs> Odyssey, like the the oh. science stuff. Yeah, like the it tuning make, for makes it really good. Sounded fan, and then with the the yeah. pads, it was like very comfortable. I just, so. I, I hate on ear headphones. I just don't. Yeah, understand and that's why. why I did. I never really thought. But then with the skull candies, it actually became over ear. So I was. Oh, I was, oh, wow. That's yeah, really yeah. Cool. It's like because they were bigger. Wow. Like they were like okay. a little bit bigger. Um, I need to. I need to try that out. That's awesome. I like that. Cause yeah. I, I almost bought the sign because I heard it and I went, "Wow!" Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. I like left it on for five minutes and went, "No." <laughs> yeah. That's like the. That's like my uh, SR one twenty fives from Grotto. Like I love them because I have the purple Yaxi pads, but like I can't wear those for very long. My ears are yeah. like. Ah free me <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but let's uh, see yeah i see some there's lots of good questions here guys um do, do your mobius have a high noise floor no oh. the only downside with the mobius is that because they have so many electronics in it if mm-hmm. you run it analog you there's going to be some channel mm-hmm. un- imbalance um and it's a it's, there's this weird phase issue i think at around like it's somewhere in the lower mids around like 300 hertz and that's just maybe 400. It's kind of just a requirement there, I think, because they have, again, all this stuff in there and they're like correcting for it with DSP. So that's the only downside, really. Um, um, there was a question way earlier from Taryn and he asked you specifically oh, to resolve. Who? Taryn. Who's that? Oh, okay. who's this guy? oh yeah. <laughs> uh, that's weird, I, I dude. Might, 
I'm his awkward. Mistress, apparently. His mistress, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it, it, uh, inside office joke. Uh, but like, um, he was asking uh, LCD2, I think 2.2 versus LCDX, no EQ. You can only have one. LCDX. Well, no EQ? No EQ. Which LCDX are we talking about here? Uh, I'm assuming the ones you have. It, 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 I don't currently. have an LCDX here. Or sorry, XC maybe. Oh, no EQ? XC, uh, easily, hands down. It was like way up. Maybe it's X. If it's X, that's a tougher choice. Because <laughs> the X without EQ is an... Well, that one, at least, that I tried was a really odd. Yeah, LCD X. Do you enjoy the LCD 2 or the LCD X more no EQ allowed? Yeah. LCD 2? Pro- well, because, okay, here's the thing. I think I could maybe get somewhat normalized, uh, but to, mm-hmm. to, to an odd sound signature, like both of them have an odd sound signature. Yeah. But... Um, that LCD X in particular was really weird. I, I think, okay, here's the thing. I would probably go LCD X and then later on down the road, just buy different pads for it. Oh, right? that, makes like sense. that would be mm-hmm. the way to go. <laughs> Cause the LCD X yeah. is clearly more detailed. Like this is yeah. great, but the LCD X is like on another level. Like it competes yeah. at it's way with the clears. Price. I mean, it's, it's, at, it's, it's, that's, I like, think I, it's even better than that. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like the LCD X is nuts that, for detail. That's what I say. Like it's in that tier though of, of headphones. Yeah, but, of, like the, yeah. the clear L C D X. Um yeah. I throw the Aeolus in there, but that's more of like the 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 fun sounding one of the group. Um Yeah. Um definitely. Closed speakers hit down to twenty five hertz, <laughs> but you don't hear that. You feel it. Yeah. Um <laughs> which is that I mean that that's awesome. Um oh I wanted this. Uh, ask did you see the 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 wood the custom wood odyssey stuff oh yeah yeah the new stuff that's coming I'm, out here i am on the subject of odyssey uh, <laughs> that stuff looks wild like they mm-hmm. had the maple one there's like had, those red like the super yeah, the red, red looking ones. one mm-hmm. yeah they're really um, really nice looking so those are me those are the, for the fours though right i don't know right I, I, I mean i would assume it's for one of the higher end ones yeah, yeah. but even this one is kind of unique as far as i can't remember what kind of wood this is but it's it looks uh, nice metal, metal was telling me that it's not normal so yeah <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see here. How They're does the all, Sony uh, XM3 Bluetooth without EQ stack up to something like the 650, 600, and so on? It doesn't. Otherwise? It doesn't. It yeah. really doesn't. Like, if you want good sound, if you want to take sound quality seriously, yeah, none of those ANC close back things are any good. Like, they are mm-hmm. there to do a function, which is yeah. cancel noise, and they're fantastic for that. Mm-hmm. They do not compete. They're not on the same level. Um, now the that's why again I say like if you can if 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 they can pull off if some company can yeah. pull off a planar uh, ANC headphone you know maybe that would be the thing uh, I think everybody sort of wants that um, it just needs a lot of, uh, maybe not necessarily a lot of power that. but yeah like it might they might just be massive headphones, maybe. <laughs> well this isn't that big actually the yeah. Mobius and it's reasonably comfortable once it does sort pretty of good stretched out. Yeah. I have the cooling pads on mine and that makes a big difference too for the Mobius. Uh, is it like water cooling your head? Not yeah, it, it's like weird, man. It has like a on the outside. It's like a they have that cooling gel inside the oh. layer inside the pad, inside the ear pads and it has like a pretty interesting uh cooling sensation. Like sorry, Ke- Kevin says based on the response to the last show, I'm selling my Meza Imperion. If you like it, you know, don't If you like it, don't yeah. <laughs> like th- this is the thing too, like with whenever you see like impressions of something mm-hmm. um and like not just i'm not talking about the imperium here i'm talking about like if somebody buys any you know audiophile headphone yeah and that's like the first time they've ever had like a high-end headphone mm-hmm. they're bound to like it and yeah. they're bound to like it more than everything else they've mm-hmm. ever you know heard because it's actually it's that's, actually it, a really nice sounding thing you know regardless maybe there's other stuff that's better right maybe it doesn't it's not as mm-hmm. competitive but like it's better than like whatever whatever you're, you, you had before. previously or yeah or, <laughs> so, or even that new flavor like you just bought a new thing you're gonna enjoy yeah. it you're gonna love it you know like there's it's i mean some people don't I mean, but uh yeah and and if you like it who gives a rat's ass when anybody else thinks <laughs> yeah that, and this is the thing when i was listening when i reviewed the Empyrean, i was i definitely was in that moment of like this sounds amazing mm-hmm. and then it took a while for me to realize yeah, that like, <laughs> like wait a second there this There's is not weird as competitive this. as i wanted it to be and yeah. i think i think um I, I remember like later on watching um, um metal 571's review of it and i it's funny because i had the exact same like 
experience with it like mm -hmm. like the first little bit i was like the tuning here yeah. is great it's got this warm lush thing but there's still a good balance there mm -hmm. um for like I, the upper mids and treble and everything and the treble is like maybe a little bit on the mm -hmm. intense side but like the balance was yeah. there and then uh oh chrono's back what are you doing it's hiding in the chat it's hiding in the chat <laughs> yeah um but then that's the problem is that in the context of other headphones that cost three thousand dollars or around there yeah and i was also evaluating that, other that's, headphones like yeah yeah i was like bah it's not really on that and that was my problem like the first week i was because that's all usually what i do is i'll only listen to that one headphone for like the first and that first week i was like these are fantastic i did have a little yeah. bit like i said a little bit of wonkiness with certain things um but then once i started a being them with like my verites or what did i have at the time I think I had something else, an HD 800, I think I did, but mostly with the Verites, that's when I, it fell apart for me. Yeah. Um, but then other people, like I've, when I had those on demo, like there was other people, I took them to that, the, to the meetup uh, in Seattle. We had a meetup during that time frame. It was like last year, I think. Was that 2019? Uh, 2018. And, no, it was 2019, 2019. December. Yeah, I remember because I took the train home. <laughs> and, and I remember like a couple it was of people. Really cold. <laughs> so yeah, that was really cold. Uh, but I remember certain people like would put them on, and within seconds were like, "Nope," <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> like instantly knew it wasn't for them. So I mean, that's oh wait, you're talking about the meetup that was in Vancouver, or was it? No, this was oh the Vancouver one is pretty good. That we had that yeah. one. That was the uh, um what what was his name? That was earlier. In earlier. And then we did another one Vin in Seattle. Vincent. Vincent. Vincent, Vincent thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. He brought I'm, one. I'm thinking yeah. of his, like, Discord name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and then I did it to the one at, uh, we did the, the meetup in Seattle in the summer. And uh, there was a bunch of people there. And um, I don't think you were there for that one, actually. And, uh, but yeah, a bunch of people were, had the, the were playing oh, with before. the Before. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'm more interested in selling for a clear and either Radiance or Atticus. Out of all of those, wait, but the Imperium's three thousand dollars. Yeah, the Imperium's is three, dude. Uh, can't you get a Stelia for around that price? Yeah, yeah, I would say I would honestly, a... if, if you were to ask me if to pick between a Stelia and an Imperium, I'd pick the Stelia every time. Me too, me too. That definitely would be, definitely. Um, Sh Shedua, Shedua wood looks better than Sh Zebrano in Odyssey's. I don't know what either of those things are. <laughs> 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 this is something for for zach he'd probably know about those yeah I, uh, this sh 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 oh, yeah i can't pronounce it right now how can um, we connect a hyphen and sandara to a cell phone which not have a standard 3.5 millimeter jack why no you don't want to be connecting it to a cell phone because it's it it's not power. a portable headphone it's yeah. it, you need an amplifier um you could buy like a DAP or something that would work, or or one of those mm -hmm. like portable portable amp deck things. Yeah, like you could like a dragonfly, thing, or dragonfly, or yeah, even that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, that's how you do it. Um, I'm, Imperion on Felix Audio Euphoria is lovely though. The Verite does clearly out resolve it. Yeah, I could. I imagine that's. Mm -hmm. I imagine that's that's the way to go with that. Yeah. I, I mean the Imperian is good like that's I think that's it seems the, like, yeah, it seems like, like every like, every stream we're gonna talk about can't the Imperian. Imperian, yeah like it's, I think it's because it's such a controversial or like um divisive like headphone yeah, yeah, I mean, um but see like in my opinion it's not that the head, it's bad to me like to me the problem is is that it's not competing personally in my opinion so my no, opinion objectively ob objectively it's not competing <laughs> it's, <laughs> okay, I mean, it just it just doesn't at the price point it's the 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 value you get from it is all in the looks and comfort to me um, and the build quality the, that's stuff. what i'm saying the build but, quality yeah but um the, the other thing with that though i mean people like the night on the night owl and the night oh, yeah. and stuff like if that. if you like those the imperial you know, is the, so there's a <laughs> I mean, I don't like loose bass, but yeah. there are people who do. So, you know, or that's not, I shouldn't say loose bass. I don't like bass that bleeds into mids, mm -hmm. right? I don't like that kind of soupy, thick quality that much. But some people do. So yeah. if you do, that's fine. Um, yeah. And, and, it, and they, I mean, don't get us, like, that's the thing. Like, they're fun and they're enjoyable headphones and they're like, ridiculously comfortable. But it's just at the price point, you're paying for the engineering of the headphone more so than the sound yeah capabilities technicalities there was there was another comment here i totally missed it and i'm sorry because it was an interesting one as well and i wanted to touch on it but it's gone yeah i know <laughs> I, I did gone. that too i did that too i was like scrolling <laughs> and i was like oh what that's all oh, it was really good and i totally missed it um icon atticus uh i think those are both fantastic uh vincent um 
what are my opinions on those? Uh, at their price point, they're probably one of the they're some of the better closed backs for sure. Um, but Atticus, the, yeah, Atticus and Icon. Oh, I have I have not had a chance to hear. I think well, the, I, 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 the pref- I prefer the Icon over the Atticus, and I think that tends to be. But I mean, that's more just a preference thing, not like a. Yeah, um, uh, if you're going to sell your Imperians because there are people who don't like it, you're going to end up making a huge mistake. Yes, I, I agree. Like if you mm-hmm. like it. Then don't, don't yeah. sell it. <laughs> don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, don't. That's, 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 yeah, those are just a, those are people's opinion. You know, like it's just that. that no, everyone's they're, they're got objective them, so. truths, man. They're objectively <laughs> not. Just, um, it's the way it is. Um, but yeah, like I think that there's just uh, yeah enough on the Imperians. We'll talk about something else. But that's, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it is it is worth. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I even just I've been dealing with a lot of um, commentary on like that that subject of you know audio is all just just uh you know data and stuff like that and that you know, even mm-hmm. i was thinking like even if you think that's true you know experiences are not data yeah experiences are what people have yeah and that actually factors into how you're listening or enjoying your music yeah. too and like even that's... so like even like okay so yes there's the psychoacoustic stuff mm-hmm. where you're like oh you know and no, nobody likes hearing that you know that psychoacoustics plays <laughs> yeah, a role but it really true. does it does and then and then you know even beyond the psychoacoustic stuff there's there's a limit to you know being able mm-hmm. to correlate that you know objective data stuff with what the experience is like mm-hmm. not just in headphones but in like everything where you're analyzing mm-hmm. it from multiple sides there's always going to be that disconnect of you know you know being able to perfectly draw you know correlate um, yes that information like th- this is the thing like Maybe I should do a video on this, but like, ears don't perceive anything. Ears don't mm-hmm. hear anything. Eyes don't. Yeah. You do that. You yeah, do, you're... you are the one who is the experiencer. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what sound? They're does just receptacles ears, to then. Yeah, they're just sensory inputs. They're sensory. <laughs> yeah, they are not perceivers. You are the perceiver. The people are perceivers. Yeah. Um, and I so agree. that includes all the rest of the stuff that's going on with the gray matter, right? So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that, that factors into even like, uh, even, even Sean Olive mentioned it in some of his studies too, where he talks about like the, the look of a thing will factor into how someone enjoys it to some level. Not greatly, but it does factor. Um, uh, t- definitely. Um, but yeah, somebody's going to get mad and say, what do you mean ears don't hear anything? This is an ear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this does not hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> literally is what he's trying to say <laughs> yeah. um but yeah uh, i think that's funny uh yeah <laughs> but yeah I, you're right i think the perceptions and, and how someone intakes that and then computes it in their head and then how they perceive that is what really yeah. matters and factors yeah is the focal utopia still a benchmark for detail retrieval in 2020 what do you mean by benchmark at four thousand dollars at four thousand i mean that's expensive headphone but um, i don't know if it ever well yeah when it first came out it probably was yeah um, detail retrieval. i mean benchmark it's... it's weird to talk about a benchmark at four thousand dollars yeah um yeah because okay so there's other stuff for dynamic driver yes i don't think yeah. there's any other dynamic driver out there any other dynamic driver headphone that has better detail than the utopia i have not heard it uh it, but it to find benchmark is the problem. Well, I don't think it's it because like there's other stuff out there. Like I do think the LCD four has better detail than the Utopia. Oh yeah, LC4. And I do think yeah, there's some stuff out there that I would go yeah it has better detail, but it's not dynamic driver. So maybe some E stats as well. Like mm-hmm. E stats yeah. have some really great ones. SR 2.9. Yeah, SR one A is super fantastic. But SR one A, I actually do think it it does have better detail. Yeah, SR one A definitely has better detail. Um. Uh, but that's a whole nother beast. Um, yeah, Elmer kind of nails it too a little bit. If you want to be force fed detail, don't care about things like frequency response and utopia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't care, if you don't care about things sounding normal. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I mean, this is a good subject because, like, because like even in the lower end stuff, right? Yeah. Do people? I I, I almost want to like run like a, a, a ex- some sort of experiment you know obviously not non-controlled non-academic yeah. experiment but just some sort of experiment with the the viewers and like in comments because like this is when i was talking with fang bian like you know back in february i know i keep referencing these but they were the very influential conversations but he told me that like you know in the in the high-end stuff like for let's say over a thousand dollars or whatever like mm-hmm. the, the audiophile world with the, where we're you know 
spending stupid amounts of money on headphone toys yeah <laughs> uh, we care people care a lot about you know linear sound neutral sound mm -hmm. and and if it has a linear sound with really good detail that's really good because that's that's mm -hmm. what people want but in the lower end stuff like under 300 dollars or something like that there might be a perception that linear sound is boring and linear sound is not mm -hmm. as good that you want some sort of more flavor kind of stuff going on there because that might make something more fun and mm -hmm. the, the disconnect and this is what i want to sort of ask people is like do you want something that sounds neutral do you want you know or do you want yeah. something that has flavor do you want a linear sound or do you want yeah um the more kind of like guilty pleasure kind of fun stuff and then and then you know is and why right that's the other thing it's like because do people who want that kind of stuff do they want um it, it, are they thinking because there isn't any additional benefits as far as image clarity and detail and sound yeah. stage and, and dynamics and, and, and how much is scale it up and then how much of that is also because you hear all these audiophile reviewers and everybody else saying studio neutral is the way because it's the audiophile well, way like there's also that right. side too like so like so like uh, i like things to sound normal but mm -hmm. good right <laughs> now when when like good in the sense of like good technicalities and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But I, I, I like, I want things to sound normal the way I hear stuff in real life. Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about that, that doesn't really sound that appealing. That sounds boring as shit. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I want headphones to sound fun and engaging and exciting yeah. and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that it makes a ton of sense. Why in the lower mm -hmm. end segment, lower end market where people haven't had the opportunity to hear stuff that's really detailed and really, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, technically well, impressive you know it, it gets a different response you know it's funny and it's something i've been noticing a lot too and actually i think even elnrick mentioned it a little bit earlier uh it's if you look at the people that have been the entry level is like a lot of fun headphones a lot of like that you're talking about like flavors and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and then you get into like the mid to higher end stuff audiophile world and those th that group of people that are in that realm uh and they look like the studio neutral more they get into the more like the natural clean kind of sound but then they all of a sudden you get into the upper tiers of people that spend stupid money on on headphones and stereo stuff and it's all tubes it's all like <laughs> so they are all what well, right but in many cases they're also taking their normal neutral yeah. linear headphones and, and, and flavoring them with tubes <laughs> flavoring them up. so you're yeah. going backwards right? yeah it's like this weird yeah like you go you do this like yeah. or I but don't i don't think the, it's the, a i don't think it's a straightforward trajectory because no. There are still addition like there's there's a difference between an HD eight hundred S on a tube amp oh, yeah. Massive versus, difference. you know, a, a beat solo three, right? Like oh, yeah. <laughs> you might be flavoring yeah. up the HD eight hundred S a little bit, but you're not getting you're not, yeah. you're not doing that. Like there's you're, it's, you're not rattling your eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> flavor isn't just like flavor yeah, yeah. positive I, 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 or negative yeah, neutral. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, there is a very good kind of yes, way of doing sorry. that. In a very bad way of doing that. Correct. Correct. Sorry, I was I, I was uh I was blanket stating, and I should have been more clear. On no, no, but, take, but, but yeah, that, but you're right. Like they do, they do <laughs> like to use. I like to use tubes mm -hmm. as well, even just with the uh, the LX on. Mm -hmm. Oh man, the Cayenne tube thing and clear as well. Like those ones Coast, on the oh, on the man, Cayenne on tube. Low, yeah, the Cayenne tube. I have that too. And it, yeah, on that low, oh, it's really they're really nice. It has a nice flavor to it. Like um. Yeah. I have oh, yeah. I have measurements of, of how it boosts the bass that it's I was gonna say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I chased detail for a long time, ultimately realized that pleasing tonality is more important mm -hmm. than fine th for me than detail. And this is why EQ is important. No, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> uh, you also get some background lighting. I normally have it, but it's charging. Yeah. Right. Like this one here. Normally Tyler yeah. only has background lighting too. I do right? too. Yeah, mine's uh charging as well. And then I I have this weird I've been having this weird issue with my aperture. Uh some of my aperture stuff where when I char when I'm charging or powering it, yeah, <laughs> and I have it going, uh it it won't turn on when I have it on. Like if I turn oh, it on. Oh, it doesn't turn on when you yeah, I know. When I charge but, it. Yeah. But then if yeah. I use it out of a plug, it does. I don't it know. It does, yeah. Yeah. So but if I'm plugging it off a USB off my computer, it doesn't I don't know, that's weird. I have to figure it that out. Shaped. Slight bass boost, a slight mid boost, flattish tapered highs, solid build. <laughs> and New. shaped. I like that. That's... Yeah. I would say W shaped, but like, yeah. But yeah. Let's, it, let's get it, Z shaped. It, let's go Z. <laughs> let's make it shaped like a T. Like a T. There you go. I like this. <laughs> so 
whole bunch of, you know. Oh, I was joking with, uh, so, uh, who was I talking with? Oh, I was talking to Tork, and I was like, yeah, because I, I replaced a whole bunch of my stuff. Ampersand. <laughs> I love it when it does this. It's yeah. amazing. Um, <laughs> but I was, because I have a, almost all my stuff on my desk right now all has a T in it. I have the ECP T4, the Cord mm. TT2, and the Hagerman Tuba. And I was like, I just have a thing for T amps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get the uh, tin hi fi. Yeah, I have, <laughs> I have the I have the T four. I do have the T four actually. There you it's go. Blocked away. Um, yeah. What is what is it about the camp campfire auras that you've mentioned? They do some weird trickery with the soundstage. Yeah. So yeah. what they do is they cut out something it's like, like the right mids, after, and then yeah, it's somewhere between two and three k, and they they reduce that. Mm -hmm. Um. So and your then, balance yeah. generally is 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 like good overall, but like. They'll they'll do stuff in the in the mids there in the upper mids that um, when you reduce CMF does this too when you re reduce like a certain range there mm. it enhances the sense the perception of of soundstage yeah. and it's effective but mm. um, it's different from if you just move the drivers further away from yeah. the, from your ears. Um, let's see, uh, four hundred dollars for those who wear glasses. I'd say. Uh, $400 glasses. I've meant Sundara. I was going to say the Sundara because the pads are soft enough and then it Well, has... and also it's front, it's not um like, what is it called? Front volume? Front volume. Field. So like oh, on, yeah, the, yeah. on the Sundara, when you move the headphones mm -hmm. away from your head, you get more bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sundara is a good one. Um, And then, yeah. A lot of, as long as the pads are relatively soft, they can... Yeah, they'll contour over it. Mm -hmm. Like, in, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do two more questions and then we're going to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um... I'm about to sell my Aeon 2 open. It doesn't do anything special besides its comfort and weight. Any recommendations for a planar replacement? I own Sundara, HD6XX, and Verite. Oh, wait, you own the Verite open? Oh, that's done. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, yeah, the Aeon 2 open is, is, okay, like, maybe it was just this one that I have here, but it was one of the worst sounding headphones I've ever heard. Yeah, I wasn't I a have, big fan of the there open. Was, there was, like the closed is great, but yeah. the open, there was nothing redeemable about it that I could, at least as far as it's tuning, right? The technical performance was fine, but that tuning, man, I don't understand why they did that. It was really weird. Um, maybe the different pads that they have for it now can help with that. So I'd love to get some different pads and see if that does change it, because yeah, I mean the original Aeons were were better tuned, you know, I think, than the open. I would the say open. Uh, probably the Ananda, or if if you want to go up higher, the uh, Aria would be a good replacement for it. But they're yeah, not like, closed back, and then I mean, you'd have to sell the Sandara too, because the, yeah, because then you know, you're like, it's a yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think I your dynamics know. are fine, but then yeah, if you wanted to get like a, a, a another maybe or maybe the LCDX. Yeah, but you'd have to EQ that. If yeah. You, yeah, like this is the thing. Like, okay, I love the Odyssey technical ability and the sound and stuff, but like, I think if you're gonna be buying an Odyssey, you also have to probably want to like be comfortable learning how to EQ, um, or use their Reveal Plus um, on some of them. Like the LCD One, the Reveal Plus nails it. So um, I think it's it's like worth because they it's not just and it's not just like about. Um, you know, matching a target or something like that. But these handle EQ so freaking well mm -hmm. that um, I really think you're you're almost like wasting it a little bit. It's a missed opportunity if you get the, into the Odyssey stuff and don't EQ. Um, but that's that's just sort of my take on that stuff. Yeah. Like uh, I, I don't think you need to be EQing the Focal stuff like the Odyssey stuff, right? It's yeah. not the same. Um, okay, uh, one more, one more. Um, if you okay, here's a good one for you, Tyler. If you had a thousand dollars. Uh -huh. Which headphone would you buy straight away? Thousand dollars straight away. Thousand dollars. Oh, you know what? Probably the Elex, man. Honestly, thousand bucks. So, thousand Maybe. bucks. Is it used or like what's the like? Can I get used? Because if it's used, I'd probably go HD eight hundred. And you I'd definitely find one of those for that. Yeah, yeah. So I do HD eight hundred with an SDR mod, and I'd, I'd, that's probably my what I'd go with. Um, you can. I mean, used you could probably find an LCD X then for a thousand dollars as yeah. well. Well, yeah, uh, but mostly. if we're talking brand new, maybe the uh, clear on a sale. Yeah, you could find the clear on the sale around that. Um, mm -hmm. Brand new, I would do this LCD two F. Now the Alex does do certain things better, mm -hmm. I find, um, and certainly without EQ, the Alex is the better buy. Yeah, um, but uh, under a thousand dollars, it would be this for me. Yeah, I honestly, I'd I would personally probably go HG eight hundred action, or yeah. actually, uh, it or if the clear, if it was a nine hundred dollar clear, 
Yeah, if you can find the clear for nine hundred dollars, that's, <sighs> that's crazy. a fantastic headphone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like, I mean, just thinking right now, like the L- the Alex is the is such incredible value. It's like it's almost the clear, like mm-hmm. almost. And if if you could find a clear for nine hundred, then I think yeah, I would spend the extra two hundred to get the clear because not only would you get it to be a little bit more. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean. The clear you also get you know the hard shell case and you get yeah you know, you get some mul- cool funky stuff yeah there's yeah. more that you get with it but but at the same time like for just just pure sound enjoyment alone, mm-hmm. yeah um they're very 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 close so um yeah that's that would be a tough call uh, but i still think under a thousand dollars like right now like without the sales and stuff it mm-hmm. would be this for me and then yeah maybe in second place would be the alex or the hyphen and nanda which is the other mm-hmm. fantastic sounding planar in that sub one thousand dollar range yeah so it'd be between those three i think i think yeah for me if i had if someone asked ananda or elex i'd probably personally i, I like the dynamics better so i'd go elex one um, thing with the elex there's definitely unit variation on that thing oh yeah the first one that i evaluated was nothing like mm-hmm. this one so i don't like somebody's saying yeah the elex was a bit shouty and like the first one that i heard was also a bit shouty and it was so this one's actually warmer than the clear yeah, yeah. <laughs> which i thought was it surprised me a little bit which um, is fixed the one i had my one i bought the, uh was similar to what you described the one you have now that's what mine yeah. felt like and but then warmer i remember reading yeah and i remember yeah. and i had both at the same time and it was warmer than the clear when i had it yeah. and then i just preferred the obviously you had the clear like the elex becomes kind of even yeah. though it had a different signature but uh yeah and then someone asked elex uh so and i end up personally i got the aeolus and then i got rid of all my focal stuff outside of uh the elysia and then i yeah yeah when i heard your aeolus that's sort of the i mean it's a bit more expensive than the Alex, right yeah so it's like 1200 i think you can yeah. use for like 1100 yeah. to it. Uh, actually if you go b stock i think with zmf november they do the b stock sale and you can get them for like 900 bucks sometimes depending yeah i think it's in that like the, the other headphone that I think people are sleeping on a little bit in the like one thousand two thousand dollar range is the Otour. Oh yes, Auteur. I really think yes. that, that has is a fantastic like headphone. Overlooked, <laughs> yeah, way overlooked. And it's it's great. You know, it competes with the clear, and I think yes. there are some reasons to prefer it. Honest, um, honestly, I think it's more competitive to the, with the clear than the yeah. Aeolus is. I think the Aeolus is more of that fun, warm, where the Atour has more of the clear, yeah, clean the sound. Yeah, the Atour is like almost my perfect... Mm. It's like more almost. natural, neutral yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it for the live stream, guys. We're going to uh, cut it uh, yeah. a little... Well, a little... I just feel like cutting it short, but we're already in an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> <so. Yeah. laughs> uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Thanks for your questions. And um, we will see you guys in the in the next one.